How's it going entomologists? My name is Jack from Kentucky Bugs. This week we are going to be looking at sexual dimorphism in bugs. Now what is sexual dimorphism you might be asking? Well, I'm glad you did. It'll make this video easier to understand. The Encyclopedia Britannica defines it as the differences in appearances between males and females of the same species. Now some people might consider cultural gendered traits, such as long hair, to be sexually dimorphic. But obviously, that ain't the case. In biology, this more so refers to the different traits that males and females develop genetically. Now, why has this developed in so many different organisms? Our old pal Darwin suggests this is because of sexual selection, meaning that if an organism has a particular trait that is very useful to mating, that organism will have more babies. Therefore, a high percentage of their babies are going to be having this trait, and then it continues on throughout the generations. One of the most common of these traits that we see in the animal kingdom is going to be size differences. In the world of insects, males and females can feature striking examples of dimorphism. In most cases, female insects are considerably larger than their male counterparts. A study conducted on 158 species found that 81.6% of female bugs were larger than males, with 7.6% of males being larger. To find some examples, let's head out of the house and into the lab. Now this is the giant prickly stick insect, also known as Maclea specter, also known as my favorite bug in this room. Now for most stick insects, females are gonna be larger. They're gonna be rounder and thicker, while the males tend to be thinner. So while these might seem like minor differences, you know, think about it. These bugs are trying to look like leaves. Therefore, the thicker and wider you look, the more likely you are to blend in with your environment. By being bigger and better camouflaged, the survivability of these females increases. Think about this in the context of what I was saying earlier. These traits make them more successful parents, which make them have more successful kids and therefore more successful grandkids. And now outside of insects, we can also see this trait exceptionally displayed by one species I can't hold, the black widow spider. These ladies are larger and more powerful than the smaller males, which they're actually thought to eat after mating. However, most of the evidence for this has been found in labs where the males can't exactly escape. Fun fact, in 1933, a University of Alabama professor consentingly allowed himself to be envenomated by a black widow. He did this to prove to the doubters that yes, they are indeed dangerous. Only in Alabama. Now the females live much longer than the males, maybe a couple of years. And this could be due to the fact that they eat the males after mating, but this could also be due to the fact that the males are just used for mating and dying. However, the female black widow has to be big because she is committing more toward the production and survival of her kids. Black widows also display dimorphism with their coloration. While females are famous for their stark black coloration, usually paired with a bright red marker, the males tend to have white stripes on their back, further differentiating them. So yeah, it makes sense that the ladies have to be stronger. They gotta work harder for those kiddos. But what about that section of bigger males? When talking about females, we hammer home that being big is good for after mating to care for the babies and eggs. Now there is another way that sexual dimorphism can come about. The way of Big words, right? Well, simply put, that's when boys fight boys and girls fight girls. And the gents tend to duke it out more often. And this is because the ladies have to put in more work while the dudes are just out there fighting for a chance. We see this in some species of beetles, where the larger males are the ones that tend to get the girl. This is due to their ability to succeed in pre-mating rituals, which might include some wrestling between potential suitors. We see that here in Kentucky with the staghorn beetle. Males have large, cumbersome mandibles that they grapple each other with. Other beetles around the world, such as the rhinoceros and atlas beetle, have similar strategies. But Jack, are the only sexual dimorphic differences in size? No, like I just said, there are some drastically different ornamentations. Let me explain some other examples. Some dimorphism traits can be useful to finding females. Male moths, like the one we have here, have distinctly feathery antenna. Now, I know what you're thinking. Jack, it's just an attractive hairdo. Well, it's actually the opposite. It's a detective hairdo. Males have these well-combed antenna while females do not. These antenna act as a nose where they can sniff out female pheromones and find love. Compare that to mosquitoes. Both males and females have feathery antenna, but the males are especially floofy. 
While females might use their antenna to detect and find you for a bite to eat, males use their antenna to listen in addition to smell. You know that annoying high-pitched whining sound that mosquitoes make as they fly around your head? Well, that's actually the love song that males are attracted to. The hair-like structures on mosquito antenna are more like ears and pick up on the vibrations of females. Finally, I'll leave you with one more oddball of sexual dimorphism, the stock-eyed fly. Males' eyes can span greater than their own bodies. They're held up by stalks and they act as the primary sexual selection mechanism in the animals. Not only do females prefer males with a wider eye span, males will also size each other up. Those with a shorter eye span will back off from those from the wider eye span. Just remember what works in the animal kingdom might not always work in our own. Hey babe, dig the antenna? Thank you all very much for watching this week's video. We'll have another one just like it up next week. If you're bugging for more content, make sure to check out our social media pages where we have exclusive content on those every week. Lastly, how many ants does it take to fill up an apartment? 10 ants. Thank you very much.